This is Ozarker Beyond the Song, a series dedicated to the stories and characters who shape this album through the lens of a very spirited family history that stretches across generations, from bank robbers to statesmen, high-rolling gamblers to gospel-singing radio sensations. These are the stories told to me and passed along, stories from the heartland, the stories from real Ozarkers. I'm Israel Nash, and this is Ozarker Beyond the Song. In the rolling hills and farmland of Marionville, Missouri, amidst endless tree-lined canopies of red apples, there at the Plowman family orchard, a young Susan Plowman fell deeply in love during a summer harvest season that forever changed her life. His name was James Christopher, a young doctor. He had just moved to town, intent on growing his new practice. He was a handsome and charming bachelor who soon attracted the attention of many. Susan's father introduced them, and Susan, a free-spirited and beautiful young woman, quickly captured the young doctor's interest. But Susan refused his advances. Her heart would soon belong to another, Thomas Forster, from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, He was a dreamer, a traveler, played the guitar. He enjoyed a drink and a late night with friends. A young man finding his future, Thomas caught wind of long hours and good pay as a laborer for a crew heading down to Missouri for the harvest season ahead. And as fate would have it, he was assigned to the plum and orchard. Thomas first saw her in the distance as she gathered water from the well house. He rushed across the field in stride, scooped up a handful of wildflowers and introduced himself confidently. My grandmother, raised to avoid such bold advances, quickly turned away, but only after first accepting the flowers clutched in his hand. Susan couldn't sleep that night. Full of intrigue and excitement, she wanted to know more about Thomas from Tahlequah. So she soon visited him near his quarters, the tent encampment that sheltered the laborers, a place she was forbidden to frequent. But there, in the shadows of a thousand apple trees, the two fell in love over that warm Missouri summer. Thomas, strumming his old traveled parlor guitar, sang love songs to Susan as they shared stories and dreams of their future together. As the summer harvest came to an end, the Plowmans hosted a harvest celebration, an evening of festivities, song and dance, marking a celebratory end to a very bountiful season. However, it was bittersweet for Susan, knowing Thomas would soon be leaving for California in search of new work. Despite her father's disapproval, Thomas approached Susan that night for a dance beneath a full Ozark moon, and he whispered to her a promise that he would return in one year to marry her. Early the next morning, Thomas departed, and Susan informed her parents of her intentions to marry him. They dismissed the idea, and insisted on a more suitable match, suggesting again Dr. Christopher, really nearly anyone other than the rough and tumble Oki from Tahlequah. Undeterred, Susan secretly sewed a wedding dress at night, trusting in Thomas's promise. But as time and distance tested their young love, Susan grew anxious, fearing her parents could be right. Nonetheless, she never lost faith. She finished the dress, trusting in Thomas's word and quietly counting down the months ahead when they would be reunited. Though not soon enough, another summer had finally arrived. A new group of workers swept across the orchard and within months had finished sorting, loading, and sending the bushels, pecks, and baskets of ruby red apples, closing out yet another harvest season. And once again, the annual harvest celebration commenced. But this year, Thomas wasn't there to take her hand. Night fell, and the festivities began to wind down. She wandered from the party to sit on the front porch of her family home, there alone, waiting, hoping, surely doubting the future that she so dreamed of. Was she foolish to believe in a fleeting summer love? And then and there, a sound from afar caught her attention. Headlights appeared in the distance and soon grew, beaming across the countryside. Approaching quickly, kicking up dust, an old Model 48 barreled down that winding road right at the edge of Lawrence County. And there, true to his word and under an Ozark moon once again, Thomas Forster had returned. Not to work the land or load baskets of apples, but to take the hand of his bride-to-be 
and begin their life together. For Susan, the promise of Thomas was a promise kept, and the love they shared was a love that never faded, a truly bright and endless fire that continues to shine beyond their 57 years together, through their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, including me, who will always be at heart, born from those lands and pastures. Along the lost rivers, sheltered by apple trees, an Ozarker spirit still flows today, as generations continue to bloom, all from the story of two, Thomas and Susan. Israel Nash, Ozarker Beyond the Song. Mm-hmm.